and in the clover you're saving fertilizer yeah. so mm-hmm. you're not increasing pro- productivity okay. but you're you're cutting your expenses that way like I, we spread 200 kilos of nitrogen this year right and still grew 13 and a half ton brilliant so yeah okay you're, it's helping good. you that way and how do you feel about it, John? Yeah, same as, sure. We're using the predicted urea. We have cut back on fertilizer dramatically. Sure, it's thanks to discussion groups and education, I suppose, on the whole thing and clover and the swards. And obviously, we were spreading a bit too much looking back because we're growing the same amount with less fertilizer. So, Deirdre, with Christmas gone and decorations coming down, Ireland's turkeys can relax for another year, I think. Yes, that's right, Cahill. But as we enter 2024, how are dairy farmers feeling about the year gone by? And what plans are in place to meet environmental challenges in the year to come? I'm looking forward to this one. Should be a good one. Surely will, Cahill, with Kilkenny dairy farmers John Fenley and Kieran Condon joining us for a chat to share their thoughts and their views on the year gone by. So welcome back. I'm Cahill Summers. And I'm Deirdre Glenn. Your Chagas Sustainability Advisors. And we're back for another Environment Edge podcast number 70, bring you lots of discussion and chats to help improve farm sustainability. Lads, thanks a million for joining us on the show. Kieran, did any big moments um, during the year 2023 stand out for you? Well, the biggest uh, standout for this year was the spring, the wet spring. Okay. It's having cows in nearly full time in March and not getting out then till April. And on top of that, that was the same time of the year the milk price was dropping hard, so... The so year just was, started off, everything, everything started coming against you at once at the start of the year. And um, when are you normally out, Kieran? Um, average day by by day, it'd be usually around the 20th of January. Wow, okay. And then by night, maybe 20th of February. Okay. Whereas, look, this year February was dry, so we were out like normal. But mm-hmm. then once March came, we were back in. Okay. So, that hit so everything that. then was out of sync, your silage was out of sync. And do you think, would you have enough fodder now for the back end of the year into, if we get a challenge in winter, will you be okay? Yeah, because we had um, we had around 35% reserve left over from last winter. Brilliant. So even after the, last, the long spring, we were still okay. So yeah. Yeah, oh, fantastic. And John, the same question to you. Did any of the moments stand out for you in 2023? Was yeah, good or bad? I suppose it was a really challenging year on my farm because we're a heavy soil and... Listen, February was great. Then March, April really flattened us, you know, a lot of cows calved. We usually wouldn't get out to grass until the end of February anyway. So yeah. it came at the real wrong time for us that way. And it was a, the spring was a, a real struggle, you know. And then I suppose it did come right in May and June for breeding. We got good conception rates, got first cut in dry. Excellent. Then turned back wet again, so we did struggle from... August on, we'll say. Yeah, and when did you go in this year? We were in by night, 1st of October. Wow, okay, so that's a big difference yeah, for you. Yeah, usually that'll be the 1st of November. Like I'd say, we're kind of a month out e- either end nearly, give or take, you know. Yeah, yeah. So and the two of you, we were looking at your soil maps, Cahill and I, beforehand. You're in, from Kells, where I'm from, and it's kind of a more nitrate-sensitive area dry soils you're able to get out early and you're more challenged then because you're and there's only a few miles between you really mm. um and it's mad the way that you can get out so early and then it takes a while longer for yeah. you but isn't it fantastic that that conversation as well you're aware of the type of soils that you have so that's yeah. that's great going on as well you, you'd nearly forget we had a drought this year wouldn't you <laughs> all the rain fell <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Kieran. Did you your freer your freezer enough soils? Yeah. There? The pollution impact potential maps that we look tell us that you're more prone to nitrate loss. But uh, would you burn up in a drought normally, or how is what's your grass like that way? We we don't burn up as such because we've a deep clay soil. Oh, good. Yeah. But it's still free draining, yeah. so it it it's a green drought. We get a green drought yeah, every yeah. year. So like we were we had to feed silage for thirteen days this year, which is a record. Look, usually it could be. We could have to, for 60, 70 days, we could be feeding silage, so... And a lot of concentrate in the parlour, I'd say, this year as well, going by maybe in the earlier stage. In the earlier stage, yeah, yes, yeah, but yeah. with the... And look, yeah, over the summer as well, because grass was so wet this year with yeah. the with the rain, you had to keep some type of... keep the feed into them, because they weren't able to get enough out in the field, really. Yeah, and we're, like, we're the same at home. I'm from Wexford, and our land is very freezing, and it's a lot of tillage and grassland there, but, John, like, for us, we were able to get by because... That rain, the land's able to handle it, but you have that heavier soils uh, mm. the whole summer. Like, just that is hardship. Yeah, sure, listen, it was hard. We had grass 
how to utilize it. You're leaving a lot of grass behind you grazing, so that's obviously going to affect the cow performance, you know, with salads because you're going back into swards that weren't cleaned out properly the next time. And it was just a matter of trying to keep them out the whole time and keep grass into them. A big headache down our way was, um, especially anyway, with a bit of heavier stuff, was uh, when, when the, the, like the grass grew fairly well in the back end, mm. but just couldn't get out to graze it. There's a lot of grass I wonder did it correct graze properly at all this year in the back end. No, sure, listen, my cover is, we got out in the frost two weeks ago and yeah. cleaned out a few paddocks just to drop the farm cover, you know. Yeah. But yeah. still, there's a lot of grass there that hopefully that will get a good spring and get out. To yeah. The just will suffer a bit in grass quality then when it comes to the spring when you want the good yeah, stuff. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, look, that's that's part of it. I suppose another thing that we can look out for on last year that's cropped up a lot of farms that I visit is, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of challenges in milk price, right? We had a fairly bumper year in 2022 different year this year yeah big big difference because expenses didn't really drop down till once the summer came and at that stage two quarters of the meal was already gone into the cow at the higher price whereas milk was gone lower and then a lot of fertilizer was far more bought then as well at the higher price so expenses were as high as last year and milk price was was dropping down so yeah that was a big problem this year yeah but john like you were in the game while money was up in 2022 which is great and, and yeah. I suppose from the outside looking in people are saying geez the dairy farmers are going to be buying Mercedes and, and come the start of the year but in reality like you don't get those years too often you have to take it when it's good you take it good but you know it likes to this year lead it up again yeah sure as Kieran said the, I forward bought a lot of my fertiliser um, do you know what I was only looking during the week with Nigel there about our cost of production there's 10 cents a litre of a difference between 22 and 23 cost of production and milk price is down not sure the exact figures on base prices and that but there's very little left for me in it this year we'll say very true listen lads I was out with your group I'm sure you remember it because there was some fierce crack out of the group in, in 2020 we had some I suppose heated conversations with some people in the group about the changes um, in respect to climate change and water quality um, what do you think? Do you think the landscape has changed anymore? Is there more of an awareness, do you think, um, about climate, about water quality? Yeah, yeah. I do, because there's more of an education going into it in the, from the, the discussion group site. And there's more information. We're big, like You're seeing all the PIP maps and everything. Like We're given more information, so mm-hmm. we're also having a better understanding of it, whereas two, three, four years ago, we, we didn't have this information, so... yeah. Unless you can see just see it in front of you, you don't really. It's mm-hmm. hard to fathom. And you're in derogation, and you're putting in clover as part yeah. of it. You're using less technology. You're using protected urea, so you're doing an awful lot. There's co benefits between the environment and between um, water quality with all of these actions. Have those actions helped you to be more productive? Do you think have they fed into producti- productivity this year? Um, yeah, I would. Well, the, the less wood anyway, definitely. Great, great. And I suppose maybe not on productivity, but nearly on savings. Like adding in the clover, you're saving fertilizer, yeah. mm-hmm. so you're not increasing pro- productivity. Okay. But you're you're cutting your expenses that way. Like Excellent. I, we spread two hundred kilos of nitrogen this year. Right. I still grew thirteen and a half ton. Brilliant. So yeah. Okay. You're, that's it's helping good. you that way. And how do you feel about it, Chan? Yeah, same as, sure. We're using the protected urea. We have cut back on fertiliser dramatically. Sure, it's thanks to discussion groups and education, I suppose, on the whole thing and clover and the swords. And obviously, we were spreading a bit too much looking back because we're growing the same amount with less fertiliser. You know, yeah, great, that well, that feeds into, you know, yeah. more profits as well, I suppose, yeah, yeah, in, in the pocket at the end of the day. day. And it's also feeding into the, we're getting more information, like we're being, yeah. like we wouldn't have been confident to cut back unless we were yeah. seeing the result. The uh, science. Yeah, we were seeing yeah, the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some great clover walks as well yes. at the beginning of the year. Yeah, I, yeah. I I thought they were fantastic. Yeah. And then Nigel is your advisor and he's very environmentally sound as well. Yeah. You know, everybody's pushing in that direction. Lads, the other thing I suppose is, you know, I, I'm going into a discussion group with you now. The lads are just going off um afterwards. But water quality, what's the water quality like in your area, Kieran? Are you aware of it? Yes, so okay. There's <coughs> the King the Kings River is I think it's got downgraded to poor quality. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
from the best of my knowledge, that's to do with a wastewater treatment plant. Yeah. So the pressure out there at the moment is phosphorus, but on the other side of it then, all the soils around the area are free draining. And you would have thought that nitrate would have been more of the more of a problem. Yeah. But there is a big, big issue with a wastewater treatment plant. There's one in Kilmagani, there's one in Callan, a, a bit of an issue, and there's also one out in, a bit of an issue out in Kells. Um so where you think that nitrate might be an issue within an area, it's actually it's actually phosphorus. And what kind of actions would have Nigel or, or um have encouraged you to do to be, you know, more um aware of, of how to treat your soils in a nitrate vulnerable zone? Well a lot of it is to do with the time of application of slurry slurry and nitrogen, especially early in the spring. Mm-hmm. Like look back in the day you used to be trying to go out there the 1st of February, try and get out your 20 units or even 30 units. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, you're going out with 20 units, but it might be till the 15th or 20th of February until the temperatures in the side are getting up over 6 degrees and there's no rain forecast there for your week or two. Brilliant, Kieran. And John, do you feel the same way as well? Yeah, sure. We've attributed the Kings River going through our farm and I suppose with technologies and stuff, we're keeping out with boundary limiters and the fertiliser spreaders. We're keeping out that distance zone from the rivers as well. So, yeah, yeah we are a lot more aware of it and they're all fenced and water troughs moved in. And, yeah. Know, we've made a lot of changes. So a lot of the rules that have been in uh, inputted by the derogation have been have had a huge benefit to the environment as well. Yeah. yeah. That would be a pity to lose it, wouldn't it? Massive. Yeah. Yeah. Massive. But, but uh, like you see the practice change and Kieran, you mentioned the timing of it doesn't matter if it's chemical fertilizer or if it's slurry, it's, it's all fertilizer. But the funny thing happened this year and it just shows you if you can do, you could be doing everything right and you could still be caught out. So back in, say, the end of January into February, uh, the temperature's right, long, the 10 day forecast looked good, everything looked right, rosy dandy, sun was shining. We spread out stuff next minute rain for about the month or two months after. And, and we were doing the right thing. Like, so it just shows you we're, we're at the lap of the gods with the weather. But look, at least people are doing the right thing and we're following the science. And sure, look, if it, if it goes into river, it's money of your bank account. And no one wants that because in the end of the day, uh, dear to talk to an Nigel and environmental, but the bank account has to be, be there as well. And you have to look after your family. So it, it has to all balance in. Um, now this podcast going out on the 1st of January is really going to cheer people up for the new year the next question <laughs> <laughs> and, and yourselves as well so I uh, better wish you a happy new year now we're a little bit in advance now because it's not even Christmas when we're recording this but anyway um, just to say to you lads uh, banding cow banding and derogation so Kieran, I'll start with you cow banding I, it's in there for water quality what's your feeling on it how has it affected you it affected us big time Um so we when we were only barely in the high band, we were in it by around 700 kilos, I think it was. So then last year I pulled the cows hard. So I, I don't know, did we, we lost around 35, 40 kilos of solids over it. And we're still back that now. So yeah, it, it, hit, it hit a lot, big time. Look, we didn't feel the hit last year as much because the price was up so much so you wouldn't actually feel it. But it's this year then it really hits you. Yeah, yeah. So you're big Holstein cows, is it? It's not even a big, they're not even the big high type cows. Yeah. They're well able to produce. They're just good producers. It's yeah. early calf and herd, so you're and you're out early in the spring, so yeah. they get to peak nice very quickly. What's your plan going forward? Then are you going to? Is your is your breeding plan going to change, or we stay as it is? Has changed. Has, so changed. It has changed. So, so on the PTAs, it's, we're we're down to minus one hundred and fifty on kilos of milk, and just going very strong for kilos of milk solids. Solids, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that'll help sort out that help problem. Solid, yeah. So the, the big thing there is not to be losing, I suppose, money and cows and all the rest that comes with the banding. So it's it's almost like an indirect destocking anyway yeah, at one. Is. And John, the 220, the whole of Kilkenny has been painted with 220 from the 1st of January. Mm-hmm. How is the kilograms of nitrogen per hectare? So that's a destocking. We were at 250 in our derogation. Now we're 220. Has that affected you? Not as much, but I, I have to be very careful now. I'm on 220. I'm running a, a smaller cow than Kieran because of the land type. So she's producing more salads than the eaters would say. So the banding, I'm in the middle band. What it is, I have to be very careful now with everything cow numbers. And if there's any more reductions or anything coming forward, I'm in big trouble, I'd say. 
And what kind of cow are you, a British Friesian type then? Or uh, it's crossbred, cross kiwi bread. cross. Kiwi, yeah, say, yeah. Know, they're around 500 kilo cow. They're not a real small cow, they're middle of the road. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Doing 520, 530 kilos of milk salad. Yeah. And like a deer to touch on this a few minutes ago, with derogation comes a list of rules, length of our arm, uh, or longer again, even <laughs> from head to toe. But, uh, and they're all aimed at protecting water quality. And, and if the water does improve, more regulation comes. And that's what's happened from Europe. Um, John, we were spoken briefly before we started to record. Uh, there are a lot of farms I want to know. They're, they might be a little bit shy on storage, and you're asking the farmer, can you extend your storage? What What's your feelings on that at the moment? Yeah, it's just very frustrating. I suppose back to my land type, I, I'm, I'm often housed a lot earlier than most, and I don't get out in the spring. So, like, really, we're being asked to put in, spend all this money on slurry storage. Then in three years' time, derogation could be cut to one seventy. How we're we going to pay for it? Yeah, you know, yeah. It's just not going to work. So You're all at a crossroads, really. Yeah, it's you very don't know hard what's to going invest. To happen. It's going yeah, we're going to have to sit back at the moment and yeah. just stay as we are. It's very hard. And this year, then, as Kieran said, he's in an awful lot earlier. He might be out a lot earlier later. We have a sixteen week storage here. We're not like the west of Ireland with twenty weeks. Mm. Um, it could go in that direction, I suppose, or twenty four weeks in the future. We don't know. So there will be a, a lot of investment needed. So farmers are really, really at a crossroads, aren't they, as to yeah, as to sure. what to do. Reduce cow numbers and make more repayments on concrete. You can't be done. No, no. Just no. Can't be done. Like we used the Times Grant to increase our slurry storage around three years ago. Yeah. But that was before any of the big bandings were being talked about or any of these cutbacks. Yeah. So now there's extra cubicles there that aren't needed and we have to... It, the money's have to be invested into it. Yeah, it's already affected you. It's really. already affected. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I suppose we have to think positive, and we're we're on two hundred and twenty. That's not going to change higher, but it could potentially change lower to one hundred and seventy, as you said, John. But I suppose if we don't put in those extra extra buildings, yeah. we either destock or we do the wrong thing, and does it end up with the one hundred and seventy anyway? But if we can do the right thing the next two years, maybe we'll hold at two hundred and twenty. But, uh, Kieran. Or John, has land price affect or land availability affected you? With with well, I suppose there's a bit of a land grab on. I know our way you'd you'd have to have the shotgun out if there's land coming up to keep people away. Um, the land is tight, especially well, here. Yeah, well, sure around us it's nearly there's no land yeah. available at all. There's no. It's very expensive. It's, yeah. There's not yeah. like sure. What kind of prices are you hearing uh, locally for land? Last year, I think. The cheapest I heard was five hundred, oh. and then it was going up to five to <coughs> five forty. I think it was the highest. Yeah, but sure, that doesn't. Yeah, can't be justified at all. It's hard to make money on the back of that. You yeah. can't. Yeah. Yeah. you're you're working extra to not make anything extra. So yeah. There's no point. There's a bit of a land grab situation out yeah. our way, really. Yeah. Do you know what I mean at the moment? Look, some of it's probably a bit of panic as well. Yes, I think so. Too. Some of it's a bit of panic. It's so the worry it'll over. It'll take a few years for that to settle. Yeah. Well, if people next door or land next door comes up, you're you're kind of afraid not to take it, like. Be it, if it, if you can buy it, great. But if it only comes for rental, you don't want to let it go if it's right next door to either. It's a lifetime opportunity. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a generational thing to buy, isn't it? Yeah. If it comes up, you might be lucky. Um, last question for you on the derogation between the two is which one answer? Do you, do you think we'll hold a two twenty? What's your views on it? Or are you worried about it? Or I'm definitely worried about it anyway. Um, I'm hoping it won't go to one seventy. If it does take a hit, I'll be hoping it'll still stay above 200 or around the 200 mark. Um, if it goes to 170, I think the dairy industry is in big trouble in Ireland. Yeah. Or farming in general, you know. I'm, I'm getting a lot of phone calls from farmers looking to iron down Waterford's where I do my visor work. And a lot of them now, some are not in the 220, they're actually in the 250 still, but their motto down there is now they're trying to join forces, 50 to 100 mm-hmm. and together. And their thing in the local area is let's protect the 220. They don't even feel safe to 250. They think it's come back to 220 in two years' time when the derogation comes up again. Mm. So you're in the position where you're thinking, yeah, protect that 220. But how about yourself, Karen? What's the, the feeling on the ground with your fin- friends? And uh, I'd be worried about it as well. Yeah. Because nearly as soon as they start talking about dropping it from 250 to 220, it nearly was like it was a done deal already. Yeah. And so we've seen it's happened. And it nearly seems like from a government side, there haven't been any fight put up against it. Mm. All the fight was put up against after the decision was made. So, yeah, it's hard to. Yeah, I think once you go over to Europe, the the, the gun is nearly to the head. It's very hard to win any battle. You're per, it's nearly defending what you have at that stage. But yeah, it is. Like, I know it's hard to know because like we have ministers there that aren't standing up for us. Yeah, yeah. Then they talk about food insecurity out at 
cop beatings, so yeah. it's hard to know. I think well, even it, outside of us, we'll say it's the it's the business that's generated outside the dairy thing. You know, it's not just us, the farmers. Yeah. Well, farming is worth billions. Yeah, to the it's economy. probably huge yeah. to localities. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. They don't seem to see that, and food charters should are talking about that already, and they're cutting us back. Yeah, well, Cahill and I work with groups of farmers, and I've been to a lot of discussion groups and so of Cahill recently. And, um, you know, there's great buy-in to an awful lot of the, you know, the good mitigation actions that have been put in place and great conversations and great awareness. And I think that that's extremely positive, you know. So I just think we need to move on from there then and actually, you know, get even greater action into, you know, performing well from getting that trend, that nitrate trend and that phosphate trend going in the right direction. Yeah, look at you. We, we every day we are we're visiting farms and we see, well, we're only on the ground. Well, myself, dear and Chagas for a long time, but we're only on the ground as asset advisors since two thousand nineteen. Yeah. But like, and and in fairness to the farmers, they, they haven't really had that environmental support up till then. That one on one service, and I, a bit of time, I think, and a bit more time, and you can see it from talking to you today. You, you have a good bit of knowledge on your own farms and what's going on, and you're obviously doing the right thing. So that's I think that's where we need to go. Just keep going down that route, and it, it should improve. And I think the one thing that's not talked about with derogation is um, the bigger farms are probably not going to affect as much as the smaller farms. It's those farms with 50, 60 cows yeah. that they're earning enough for their families. But if they have to reduce 10% cow numbers, that's, that's a massive it's hit. Massive yeah. That's having to go yeah. off. That's probably that farm going to be gone out of business. So yeah, yeah. it's going to have a lot of a big impact. Yeah. yeah. Any positives for 2024? Anything coming down the radar? You hope that'll be a good thing, not a, a negative. A nice warm milk, milk price is looking good, so. Yeah. Uh, Brilliant. Well, that's positive. And a nice warm spring. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're Mystic yes. Meg, there. You predicting all <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The lads are just going to their Christmas party now, so that's something positive. Yeah. I, as well. I, I, I didn't as get a the, group. I, I didn't get the invite. <laughs> yeah. Is the other going? She is. More the merrier. Yeah. yeah. Thanks a million, lads. Oh, look, lads. This this is actually like I said coming out on the 1st of January but it's not Christmas yet so I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and uh, hopefully 2024 brings us uh, more good news and I'm sure the way you're, you're working and, and your colleagues and friend farmers are working I think things will look good for us hopefully. Okay, thank Thanks you very much. Thanks lads. So there you have it. Lots of great information from the lads. And thanks to you for joining us on the show. Myself and Deirdre will be back in two weeks' time. But do give us a review on Apple and Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for listening to the Environment Edge podcast and chat to you soon.